everybody. So just like you, I have been eagerly awaiting the new Bring Me the Horizon album that's coming out um, this coming Friday, uh, post-human survival horror project. And um, even though they said it wasn't really going to be a proper album, it sure as heck really feels like a, a, a proper record. Uh, um, so I have a uh, friend uh, at Columbia Records, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but he played me the, um, the album last night, just over the phone, and uh, I got to say, I'm, I'm absolutely blown away. This is a guy that was, uh, that basically threw away my That's the Spirit vinyl once, once I thought they were... I don't know, becoming like a little too uh, into themselves and stuff like that. And um, the members are bringing me to the horizon. Um, and when the, I felt like they had completely abandoned rock entirely due to some of Ollie's statements. Um, but that couldn't be further from the truth. And so, um, yeah, I was, you can see my bring me to the horizon wall behind me. Um, I've been an absolute diehard fan since 2008, and um, so that's that's what it is. And I like the heavy sound. I also love the melodies. Sympaternal, right there, is my favorite album by them still. Um, and um, Ammo was actually a really neat surprise with gorgeous songs and. Um, in many ways, this album is kind of the antithesis of Ammo, uh, which had, you know, songs like Mother Tongue, talking about the universe's magic. Um, this trades it in, understandably, for a much angrier tone. Don't worry, I'm going to get into the songs here. But, um, of course, this album is shaped by the COVID-19 pandemic that's um, affecting the whole world and is starting to... Uh, starting to pop back up um, all around the globe again. Um, and so, no better time for some Bring Me the Horizon. Uh, final thing before we get into it, uh, I gotta give Bring Me the Horizon absolute credit for um, being one of the busiest bands on the planet these days, releasing awesome music videos. I just love the music video for Teardrops, for Parasite Eve, um, even Obey, and uh, it's funny because most bands can't uh, churn out this much work um, you know, to having just released an album last year. And then a rather forgettable EP at the, the tail end of last year. But um, Ammo was great. Maybe the most important British album of 2019. The EP was kind of a throwaway for me. I think it was just Jordan Fish really kind of doing whatever he wanted. Um, and then, uh, of course, we got Parasite Eve, and um, that was one of my favorite games as a kid. I have so many memories of it. It's like I thought everybody had forgotten about it. <laughs> so um, it's awesome that they that they named it Parasite Eve. I love the um, I love the video. I love the song, uh, the context, and uh, of course the relation to the video game. I even have Parasite Eve art print right back there. See if you can still get it on the store. You get it at the uh, Horizon Supply Store. It's pretty, pretty great. Um, all right, time to get into post-human survival horror. So, um, I still have all the tracks in my mind fresh. Uh, what is the name of the first one? Yep, Dear Diary. Okay, this one's really gonna. Uh, please old fans and um, sin and, and confuse new ones. Um, it is pure old school bringing me the horizon brutality. Um, bringing back not quite the grind core of Count Your Blessings, but the metal core mixed with a little bit of grind core um, that's uh, all throughout Suicide Season. So it really reminds me a lot of that. Um, each track will kind of remind you of a different album um, from Bring Me the Horizon, if you're like me. But, uh, so what's that one? Yeah, Dear Diary. 
like hardly any synths. I was expecting some big grand synth intro. Nope, they just go in and they go so heavy. Balls to the wall, screaming, walls of guitars. Um, it's gonna, it's, it's one heavy ass track. I fucking love it. Um, so that was, that was awesome. All right. So then Parasite Eve, you guys all know about Parasite Eve. I think it's a great single. It's not my favorite song for Bring Me the Horizon. Um, I really kind of like the aesthetic. Um, I think more than anything. Also the, um, relation to COVID and, uh, a relation to my, what I consider my favorite video game of all, really kind of all time, just for nostalgia's sake, which is Parasite Eve. Um, but it's still a uh, great song. I have I, I wake up so many days with it stuck in my head. And you guys know about that one. So we'll talk about the tracks you guys haven't heard. Um, then, sorry, I had to write this down. Then we got a, oh, Teardrops, which of course just came out um, a few days ago. And it's great. Uh, Ollie says it's his favorite track on the album. Not sure it's my favorite, but I can understand where he's coming from. Um, it's got great sense, great lyrics, great breakdowns, um, and it's just uh, really um, echoes Simp Eternal era, Bring Me the Horizon. It's just amazing. Uh, I, I love that song so much, and I love the video too. That's the thing that Bring Me the Horizon is. I hope they do a video for every song on this uh, record, EP, whatever you want to call it um because that would be really cool of them and uh they really ollie really has a way of visualizing videos and um getting exactly what he wants out of it and um i haven't been let down by bring me the horizon video um hardly ever uh so anyways um it's a great track let's get on to Obey, which is track four. You guys have all heard this one by now, I'm sure. Um, really good track. I'm not a young blood fan. I just it's not for me. Um, but he does a really good job uh meshing with Ollie Sykes in uh on that track. And uh of course that was influenced and influenced by the Black Lives Matter movement. Um really cool video and again it's a song that I find getting into my head all the time and um, really um, earnestly catchy and I don't know what else I need to say about about that track because you guys have all heard it but it's um, oh it's it's so much fun and, uh, it's got such a Linkin Park vibe a lot of this album does have a Linkin Park vibe um, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with. Jordan Fish admitted that that Lincoln Park really, uh, or what do you say, is the Bible for uh, accessible heavy music, it, or hybrid theory is, and uh, that's kind of true. And on hybrid theory's 20th anniversary, uh, what better way to uh, celebrate the influence of Lincoln Park than for Bring Me the Horizon to uh, show it, you know, through their music and um, it's just crazy how much of an influence that album still has 20 years after it came out um, yeah it's uh, you can't suppress that band Chester may be gone but he'll always be in our hearts and I hope to see them reunite so anyways uh, very cool to see and the, the members of BMTH have a good relationship with the uh, members of Lincoln Park with Ollie performing at the tribute for Chester and stuff like that. And so, um, I, I know they really admire them and you're going to see that throughout this album. All right, now let's get on to what is, I'd say the weirdest track, which is itch for the cure. That's going to sound really similar because on hybrid theory, they had cure for the itch, which was that instrumental track. Uh, I believe it was all instrumental if I'm recalling correctly. And um, I like that a lot more than the Bring Me the Horizon one. Um, Itch for the Cure is really just bizarre. Um, I don't think it's like any longer in a minute, probably less than that. Um, and actually I do have these songs available to show you, but um, I'm not going to. I don't want to go to jail and I want to give you guys a 
pleasant surprise for when the album hits on October 30th, because you dudes are going to love it. You ladies and dudes and ladies. <laughs> Don't want to leave anyone out. So, um, all right, let's get on to that one. But yeah, It for the Cures is probably the strangest track on the album. Then we get to Kingslayer, which features baby metal. Uh, I was a little worried about that. I kind of like baby metal, but um, I wasn't sure how well they they gel with Bring Me the Horizon. And um, it's a really, really heavy track, um, Kingslayer, that is. And uh, baby metal, uh, by large, sings the chorus, but it, it actually works out really great. There are some higher tones in this album um, on like Itch for the Cure and um, Kingslayer, um, high pitched female vocals on Parasite Eve too. Um, not necessarily a fan of that, but it doesn't detract from the album either. So that's really, really good. Um, all right, next one after that we have is, uh, what is it? Oh, One by One featuring Noah Twins. Uh, this one's a really interesting track, and um, I'm going to have to go back and listen to it again. But, And I have to check out Noah Twins. It's it's a dope track, electronic-fueled track, and um, but also filled with breakdowns and everything that you'd um, really expect from the band. And it fits in really well with the rest of the track listing. And, um, and with the album as a whole. In fact, every song really fits except Itch for the Cure, which acts more like a really, really bizarre interlude than anything. Um, but with both Kingslayer, I forgot to mention, and um, One Times One, um, featuring Nova Twins, the, which is track seven, those are some, some wild, wild tracks and um, heavy, but completely just pushed out and stuff like that. Jordan Ollie must have had so much fun going to town. It sounds really cool and I love that glitchy stuff um, from like Suicide Season Cut Up. If you guys recall that album really introduced dubstep to the United States. Before that people in the United States really had no clue what it was. Um, that was um, the green cover. Anyways, you guys remember that one. It was great. Featured some great remixes. Then uh, we come to Ludens, which is one of the least interesting tracks for me. Um, it has been for a while. It's positively massive. People love it. And, um, but it's, it, it's just kind of generic. Bring me the horizon for me. Heavy. Yeah. Good headbanger. I see this being a lot of fun in, in concert. Um, but it's, it's, it's just kind of whatever, and it's definitely not the strongest song on the album. And I think everyone has heard Ludens by now. It's inescapable if you're a, a, a heavy metal fan. And so that's track number eight. And finally, we get to track number nine, um, which is probably the most introspective track. Well, they're all really introspective. Um, it's probably like so many of their tracks, like um, um, track 13 on Ammo, which was I Don't Know What to Say, which was about Ollie losing a friend to cancer. Um, I like how Bring Me the Horizon typically sticks by and large with songs um, that are very much emotionally involved, but are also very much um, a call to action for people all around the world and, and, and introspection from Ollie as well. So it, it's a really cool track. It's extremely ambitious, but mm, you guys are just going to have to hear it for yourselves. The good thing is, is that I can report and there's, so there's nine tracks on the album. Um, Ollie, I know Ollie doesn't want to call it an album, but it, it really is. And it, it fits so well and it, they just constantly surprise me. Um, even when I feel dismayed about Bring Me the Horizon sometimes. And, um, 
again, I, I can't think of a band that that's that's put in more effort during during the COVID nineteen outbreak. They're just releasing stuff like crazy. And um, the last thing I want to talk about is is the lyrics. Um, they are extremely angry, and it, it's a little bit of a downer. But at the same time. Um, we're living in a really fucked up world right now. So, um, especially if you're in the United States like me, uh, it's hell here. Um, so, there, there's one line that I, I truly didn't care for, and I think it's on, um, I think it's on Dear Diary, the opening track, and it, Ollie proclaims God is a shithead. And I forget where it goes from there, but um, I'm agnostic myself. I do not have any religious affiliation outside of my admiration for Buddhism, which is not a religion, but I, I kind of wish they would quit attacking God in their lyrics. I understand it's not even that because Ollie is atheist, but it's it's kind of an attack on on false Christians more than anything really but um, there are so many people that would want to be able to enjoy this and and it's also really weird that they're so influenced by bands like Norma Jean and they even had Josh Scogan on the, the final track um, the Fox and the Wolf from um, there is a heaven believe me I've seen it there's hell or there's hell believe me I've seen it there's heaven let's keep it a secret and um, so, and uh, they're touring with Under Oath, back before Under Oath wiped away the slate from their uh, religious affiliation, stuff like that. And uh, so, I don't know, it's just kind of um, in the lyrics. I understand where Ollie is, is um, angry, but there's better ways to express it, just my opinion. And um, I think uh, when I was really disillusioned with them is last year when Ollie was hanging out with Danny Filth a lot and I don't like Cradle of Filth, just not for me. And um, he was wearing a Jesus is a cunt shirt and I would see those at concerts and stuff like that and that is, that is just in poor taste. I mean, come on, I, 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 I'm the furthest thing from a Sunday church going Christian, but no, there's no, there's not really any place for that. Teenagers might find it edgy and stuff like that, but um, not me. Anyways, forgive my rambling. I hope that you've enjoyed the review. Um, sorry I didn't play any of the tracks, but don't want to get me or my friend in jeopardy. So, um, just, just be damn excited when it, when it, just, just, just be so excited. You guys are going to love this record. Um, both old and new Bring Me the Horizon fans. There's something for everybody. And I really thought they would never go back to heaviness ever again. And with the, 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 the release of their last EP music to two with the longest <laughs> title of all time. Um, I found it to be really just a tremendous waste of time. And um, so, and I, I think they were even making comments back then, like we might never make a, uh, a, 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 you know, another rock record again or something. It's funny how, they're kind of always changing their mind about what they what they want to do, but this is very much an album. Um, apparently, we're gonna see more throughout the year. Um, so maybe this is it for we're, we're we're getting kind of close to the end of the year here. But I would more than welcome more tracks from Bring Me the Horizon and uh, Post Human Survival Horror is an album that can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, their greats and it's it's not my favorite um, and it's not the most fleshed out album but they've worked damn hard on it especially during this COVID-19 pandemic and uh, 
I just hope they release music videos for every song. So, fellow Bring Me the Horizon fans, rejoice because the heaviness is back. I hope you enjoyed the review and uh, keep it cool, keep your heads uh, on, stay safe, and uh, get ready for October 30th because you're in for a spooky treat with posthuman survival horror. Later.